Good day, everyone. So today I've got Ian with me and we'll be covering the September electionals or as known as auspicious dates. Mm. Um, mm. But firstly, we will actually touch on um, the overall main changes in terms of energy for the month of September. And for this uh, video that you're watching, it is the sneak peek uh, in which uh, you will get to know the overall astro weather uh, which we'll go in a minute to discuss, and then you will um, gain access to uh, two out of the seven charts that we've chosen. So good day, Ian. How's it going? Good day to everyone. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bit maybe sleepy because of the full moon. Usually full moons do that for me, but i um, generally pumped to do this. I'm always excited when I get to talk and discuss astrology and um, charts. Oh yeah, we are taping so close to the full moon actually, and I've been feeling mm -hmm. kind of my sleep patterns all distorted, but that's fine. I can always take a nap after this. <laughs> exactly. So shall we jump into the astro um, weather overview for September? Let's jump in. There's a lot of changes going on. Yeah, uh, and I think that the first main one is right behind me, which is Mars and Venus. And Venus actually enters um Scorpio uh a sign which you know she doesn't necessarily function very well in is actually <laughs> in a sign of detriment um I think it's on September the 10th and then six days yeah. later on September 16 or 17 depending where you are um Mars will actually enter Libra so in astrology, this is what we call like a mutual reception. That means Mars is occupying the sign of Venus rulership and vice versa. Venus is actually occupying the sign of Mars's rulership. So when I actually think about Mars and Venus in mutual reception, but they're both in detriment, mm -hmm. this is a very interesting one <laughs> because the thing is, um, when I think about this combo, um, depending whether you're a man or woman, if you're talking about a man, it tends to be more like um, philandering, <laughs> kind of. Mm -hmm. okay. And if you're a woman in which you perhaps, or female energy, because now we're in the mm -hmm. 21st century, guys can have more feminine energy within as well. Mm -hmm. um, they can adopt a more kind of take no prisoners approach. Mm. But I just want to mention that uh, like from the 16th to 17th of September onwards to the rest of September, when this mutual reception is fully active, um, this can be kind of, uh, you got a threat, waters that's potentially turbulent mm. and put, Potential power struggles in relationships may well be on its way when I see two, these two planets in mutual reception. And mm -hmm. it also can be a very lusty and passionate time as well when I think about this combo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, already Venus into kind of Scorpio, it kind of adds to the, to the lustiness. Um, but I, I have to say, it's, it's a weird one because it, it's yeah. a... Whenever Venus is in Scorpio, it's it's like, um, especially if we're talking about the lusty desire for part of ourselves, it's like people want to do it deep down in a subconscious level. <laughs> okay. And it, it, the intellectual part of um, the brain is kind of suppressing that. So it, sometimes the suppression gets so big and it kind of uh, like the desire comes out in some sort of hidden ways behind the scenes. And kind of, you know, maybe sometimes distorted, I'm not going to judge, you know, you do your thing, whatever it is it's do. But um, it is, there is a, an element of suppression here with the, the yeah. desire and, and Venus in Scorpio. This is what I wanted to, to say. Yeah. I mean, I find Venus in Scorpio as kind of like a paradox because on one hand, it's, because it's Venus, it still desires that belonging. But then with the Scorpio bit, it seeks to challenge relationships as much as it desires belonging, which I find it like a bit of a paradoxical uh, energy in yeah. itself. 
Yeah, I really like and, it. And Venus and Scorpio actually is quite comfortable in relationships that change or transform. You know, or that's a kind of like a uh like power struggles actually turn them on. <laughs> yeah, totally. I think I would even go as far as to say, uh, because I have a lot of experience with Venus in Scorpio, right. and um, it, I would even go as far as to say when it's in a person's chart, let's say natal chart, any, you know, globally, if we have it in, in, a, in a general transit, the person is almost subconsciously yearning for those power struggles, yearning for those kind of, you know, mm, cheating games let's let's put it that let's put it nicely <laughs> let's put it very nice it's almost like a subconscious desire yeah. pulled towards those so i'm i'm not saying like every time venus goes into scorpio you know everybody's going to cheat not not right. at all but like there's a desire for those hidden hidden things hidden instances in relationships let's put it that way i'm actually thinking about like um domosal venus's versus uh venus in signs of detriment because when mm. i think about domicile venus's it's more like it's gentler in terms of like enviousness whereas mm. if i think about venus in detriment sign it's more of like jealousy yeah, yeah, yeah. which can which can easily spin out of control depending on other factors of course but but in particular when venus is in detriment it's like this um, the enhancement of needing to push the external validation outwards and that in the process actually elicit uh, or bring about their power struggles even more strongly for them. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like that, what you said. Yeah. And how about what you think about uh, Mars and Libra? <laughs> <laughs> you know... <laughs> Uh, Mars and Libra is, is, is what I constantly see is, is people are still, when we talk again, I, I, I usually always bring the natal, you know, perspective and it, right. whatever happens natally usually happens a little bit weaker in a transit kind of way. So what I mean by that is um, when, when there's Mars in Libra transit, the um, kind of doubting of your actions that the person has natally at times with with uh, Libra uh, sorry uh, Mars and Libra it will happen on a mm, not so intense level globally but it is still there there's there's a hint of like should I do this should I go there should I even should I even do anything it's almost like that and it's 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 even the part of what I've seen is is the um, Kind of like the aggressive side, and this can, you know, depending on wh what side of the spectrum you are, the aggressive side of Mars is a bit tamed, but it's almost like it's tamed too much, I would say. Like it's su it's not totally suppressed, but it's kind of like because Libra is a lot to do with, you know, the public and, and uh, the others, and it's very often it's um, wanting to be seen now? as the good guy. Yes, very good. Like wanting to really be seen. And, you know, whenever you want to be seen as the good guy, it's really hard to, you know, take charge and take action because, you know, a lot of people don't really like that. <laughs> if, if the one person is going like full force and and maybe domineering a little bit too much so but but it, but the but the downside here is um, like doubting your actions, maybe at times too much. I've actually like thought about Mars and Libra, which is in a sign of detriment. And mm. because uh, actually my dad has got Mars and Libra conjunct Neptune. <laughs> oh, okay. So I've observed him how he's quite evasive, but that's the Neptunian bit. But when I yeah, yeah. just want to isolate uh, Mars and Libra, it is, Mars is in a sign of sidestepping. <laughs> it may kind of, you know, uh, start little like small conflicts, but then they never quite get to the root of addressing the main issue and solve it because Mars is yeah. the planet of like the problem solver. Yeah. And in Libra, it's like everything is very, um, you know, wanted, wanting to be seen as the good guy. Um, and everything is very diplomatic. So nothing really gets to the core of it. And Libra can be, I must say is uh can be a superficial sign as well. 
Yeah, on the surface, it looks good and it's fine. Just kind of like um, throw everything else under the black, like un, un, under the carpet. You know what I mean? And um, I, 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 yeah, sorry. So go ahead. Being terrified of addressing the main issue is 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 the problem here. And so they may kind of like just tackle what's on the surface, very superficial level, but they never quite go deep enough with that. And um, um, so whatever that they attempt to resolve, it doesn't really, most of the time actually, it doesn't necessarily end with some kind of permanent change. It's, it's almost like sticking a bandaid over the issue the problem can actually fester later on. They'll just kind of like go back to it and try to like try to try to <laughs> try to fix things and all that. I think I really like what you said about the diplomacy part because I think this is where the diplomacy part really gets in the way of the the let's say the positive side of Mars because it's very often I've seen people with this is is um, they're kind of like they've been taught that showing, you know, taking action, taking charge, taking maybe being a little bit more aggressive, being more direct, even more direct with their desires and on a deeper level, on an emotional level, like yeah. expressing anger is wrong. So this is what, what I mean by the Libra being a very diplomatic, like you said, being wanting to be the good guy, the wanting to be the seen as, you know, I'm, you know, okay with everything and, you know, wanting to be accepted by the public, wanting to be accepted by the others. And this is where the, the Mars energy gets kind of suppressed down. And so you are not to be like the best. really good at holding on to anger. But, like but this is, this, I've, holding I've on seen to this. And love for, for years and years to come, like they may not easily kind of let that come out because Mars is really expressing the anger out, right? In its detriment, yeah. it's like, you know, the tendency to kind of hold it in. Exactly. I've literally seen people who, who think it's wrong. It's, it's totally like it's wrong to express anger. And at the si same time, this is the curious part, at the same time, they're really angry. Like they're really pissed off inside. And if I, even if I've asked them, like, are you pissed off? Are you really angry? Yes. <laughs> but I, I don't, like, I'm not, I don't know if it's okay to express it, you know. It's this almost is, like is, the yeah. anger is kind of, it's like latent anger, but when it comes up or really like explodes like a, like a volcano, it's so powerful. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, they know the anger is there, it's in their knowing body, but then it's being held inside. But because when I think about it, it's like Mars is in, the sign of Saturn's exaltation in Libra. Mm -hmm. And so there's a kind of like, like holding on to it until it's like, it, until it's like, it's just like, you know, the, the, the steam just comes out from, you know, uh, between their head, like through the years. <laughs> this, this is, yeah, I think this is the problem with, with it. Like one day it will come out in, in some, some shape or form, you know. How about forgiveness though? Because Mars is like, when I think about Mars and its home sign, it just kind of moves on. Like when I think about detriment, Mars is like the forgiveness. They tend to keep on to resentment of sorts mm. longer than they should because they're not expressing what they're actually experiencing there. Mm. I mean, I think so mm. as well. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. like, like it, as long as the oppression kind of still exists within them, the anger never quite goes away. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got it as well. So how about that mutual reception? What do you think like, you know, between Mars and Venus? Because those, you know, both of them are like um, relationship-based planets. It is, you know, it's, 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 you know, usually we like the mutual reception and we, we want mutual reception. And, and I'm, I'm kind of, I, I guess I'm a bit conflicted in this case <laughs> <laughs> because they're so, so a bit, um, you know, in a, in a tough spot, I'm not going to lie. So I, I tend to agree that there, there can be, um, I would say, more conflicts. Maybe even the, the problem I see here with these both energies kind of matching, matching and, and being in, in mutual reception is, is like it's, it's both are kind of like suppression. Um, in, in different ways, the suppression, Venus in, 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 in um, Scorpio is kind of like suppression of desire, suppression of, of good things. Yeah, suppression the of, desire body of, is so strong, right? Yeah, 
and now we're we're going to the other side and and the the libra suppresses the like the physical action of, of desire and it's it's a kind of a cocktail i guess what i'm trying to say to people and to urge people is to kind of really be aware of what is happening during this 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 september maybe part of october um are you like what are you really wanting what are you really desiring is there something you're not saying to the other person are you not expressing yourself clearly what is it that you're actually desiring and wanting to take action on and if if you st start to find that balance and ask those questions i think it, it will be easier to navigate those kind of like almost su both suppressing sides of of different coins let's put it that way i think if we actually kind of combine the bits of what we talked about uh, regarding venus and scorpio and mars and libra if you're if you've not been addressing the issues in relationships then there's a tendency it's like okay i give up i shall go and like cheat and just make myself feel good for a moment mm. and that's when like the the turbulence and the you know the the power struggles um, in, re in relationships with this kind of pairing will be like felt or, or manifested um, and um, this may not only apply for like uh, personal relationships but also in business relationships maybe you just want to like oh you know I don't want to confine my current business partner and hence I go behind his or her back to kind of form a deal with someone else which you know which I more strongly feel that it will work out and this can kind of bring up trust issues with this combination, I find trust issues always come up. And I, I, I'm glad that you actually mentioned because it, I think one of the keys here is working them out because again, uh, what- Or Donnie the lack mentioned... of trying to working it out in your in the person's face. <laughs> what, uh, what you mentioned, um, I think during the beginning was, you know, Venus really like Venus in Scorpio really likes when things evolve, things change in a yeah. relationship, things transform. So this is a this is an interesting time to kind of transform those partnerships, be be personal business, kind of go like going deeper with with each other, like saying, hey, like yeah. you know, deep down, I feel like this, and you know, like what do we do? How do we you know change? How do we go move forward here? How do we transform? So I suppose this? the energy is best function when you focus on like taking turns to share and also but trying yeah, to work right, out some right. mutual compromise rather than just kind of like, you know what, I shall just kind of not deal with it <laughs> and then find, uh, look for some kind of like uh, segue loopholes and just kind of like avoid avoid that confrontation and then it leads to further issues down the road. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that kind of mutual diplomacy here because you know the the sign the planet of individuality is going to the sign of of um, partnership and diplomacy and and the the planet of 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 um, diplomacy and partnership is going into you know Scorpio is a bit of a <laughs> at times yeah. can be a bit aggressive but you know um so it's it's, it's a bit of a um, i think you need to find basically what i think you need to find the balance between individuality and kind of um uh, diplomacy but it's going to be harder to do this because they're so weakened uh, this is, yeah i think this is what i want and the last thing I just want to like bring across before we move on to the next like big energy mm -hmm. uh, within September, which kind of influence our electionals for September is that um, with this mutual reception, right? I would say that chemistry does not necessarily equal compatibility. So you mm -hmm. have to like dive a bit deeper to see if you really are, 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 um, are on the same page moving forward or you actually will discover within the month of September that you're actually more like oil, oil and water you know so there's a lot of like this kind of deeper exploration and uh, if you can't really work out like um, for example even after like you share and take turns to really voice things out but then you can't really get a mutual compromise or whatever then you know uh it's time to move on as well yeah rather than kind of i mean i find this period as kind of like a stress test 
a very good one actually to kind of clear some or declutter some kind of um, expired relationships in your life that you've been kind of trying to hang on to or not trying to acknowledge the issues within. And then all this is kind of like comes up and uh, back splatter into the face. <laughs> yeah, I, I generally tend to agree with this, surely. Yeah, so, so it can have good ramifications or results with this. So um, now let's move on to this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, one, of, one of the other main energy shifts um, will be that Mercury actually enters Libra. And Mercury will get, actually get ready to station to go retrograde in a sign of Libra. Uh, starting uh, starting on the 27th, so close to the end of September. And with that, it actually uh, is very close to Pluto. Yeah. And it's squaring Pluto in the midst of um, the station retrograde motion. And so it's the very last part of, uh, of September that, uh, that it happens. But then uh, when Mercury is already approaching into the late degrees of Libra. Um, that square between Mercury and Pluto is really strengthening. So how do you actually view this kind of like, um, well, I would say extended energy? <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> <laughs> um, let's go maybe on a more communication level relation. If we are on the relationship theme right now anyway. So Whenever I think of um, Pluto, unfortunately, with with the Mercury uh, square or opposition, you can add a bit here, but let's maybe focus on the square. It's a, it's almost like a combination where there's because Pluto is a very deep planet, and when it, when it's kind of agitating Mercury, it's it's um, one of the things I always say with this is is shame, and you know even in communication in the words we speak giving the other party or the other person um, almost trying to shame them into um, obedience or control so this is one of the negative sides i do see um <clears throat> happening unfortunately with this pluto kind of um hard aspect to mercury is it doesn't always have to be like super uh outwardly aggressive and, and yelling but it can be at times Pluto will burst but it can be also like these kind of like uh, almost hidden kind of constant sly comments of of you know maybe it's like almost like negative comments constantly twisting and turning some sort of wound some sort of pain within yourself and it can be like a psychological wound it can be like a verbal wound but it, it, it is a hurtful, can be a hurtful words kind of um, configuration here. And, and I, I urge you to guys to observe this and to see and to really look at it from a you know, relationship uh, perspective, because it, 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 maybe it isn't, uh, you know, let's put it quite bluntly, it isn't the easiest time for relationships after the, the first part of September. So please be, you know, careful with this um, pattern, because when these deep, deep, topics of Venus and Scorpio, like we said already, when these come up and you need to discuss them with, with partners, business partners, you know, with that Pluto square, that will already make it even more kind of difficult. Let's, I'll, we'll bring some positive things that will, are happening as well. So it's not too only bad, but it's, this is one of the things I want to kind of um, urge your, or put your attention to, to, to observe. Because I actually think about Mercury in Libra, because you'll be in the same same sign. Uh, well, Mars Mars is Mars will be in Libra also in September. So it's like this kind of like oh you know I gotta be polite you know I mean I gotta, gotta take the diplomatic way and and you know the the mind which is Mercury like tend to weigh things like the scales right. Mm -hmm. And if I think about Libra, on the there's a tendency to kind of struggle to make a decision. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. Or you rather just sit on the fence and just kind of like let things kind of, you know, run its own course. Or 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 you just can go like all out back and forth regarding stuff. But 
when I think about Pluto, Pluto is like very black and white, it's very extreme. So when these two are in like a prolonged square, right? um, siblings can be Mercury. Mm. So there can be like power struggles with siblings that can come out oh, or with your partner as well. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Or there's some kind of coercive, manipulative, um, controlling form of communication or messages that's being sent out in the process or when there's like discussion of sorts, which is Mercury, uh, one, one may try to overpower the other or try to like deliver something that's potentially not, tr not true or there's some layers of, you know, deeper layers of uh, stuff that you need to dig through in order to uncover what's really real. Uh, I wouldn't even, even say manipulation. Like, oh yeah, right. like, co coercive, you know, like coercive, coercive, yeah. coercive, yeah, like try to sway your opinion, um, but that's with agendas attached, you know, yeah. personal agendas, and um, I actually thought of this one because like Pluto it is the planet of death, right, mm -hmm. or from the like other realm, the invisible realm, and Mercury is messages. So maybe there's messages from the dead. <laughs> totally. So maybe some of you one, who are, oh, So some of you may be more like psychic intuitive. Uh, you can, you know, me and Ian have really like partnered up to do like a six part series on, on that. So uh, we basically covered Mercury and um, Pluto in separate episodes, but those are like um, stuff that you may want to look at. Yeah. Um, to kind of delve in deeper regarding this part um, of the conversation. And lastly, I actually put down here, like you may be projecting your shadow side outwards to others. That ties in with one of the points I wanted to put in as well, because it's, it's, it's a very kind of, when it's a hard aspect, again, it's very, very, the mind can get very suspicious and it can start suspecting people of doing things that they're not actually doing. And like we said, like, like Donnie mentioned, like it, it, people can sometimes, you know, try to coerce you or start to manipulate you in conversations into things. But at, at times, this is the weird part of the, with the square or opposition always. It's, it's like, you can also be imagining that they're actually doing this. So this is where I, I really always urge people and I urge myself, obviously, to kind of like, before you make that kind of final judgment, okay, they're manipulating, they're doing some bad things, they're wanting da 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 make sure, especially with this aspect and this combination, make sure you do some research and to get some real proof that it's actually happening. Otherwise, it can be just like you being really, really suspicious and too much on the negative side, maybe. Yeah, when I think about this square, right, it is, it's definitely not something that's, that leads to calmness in communication. <laughs> because with this square, I find that it's so difficult to be clearly heard and understood. Or certain mm. things get lost in translation, it can be. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Pluto can be so kind of subjective and it just holds on to whatever it's like, it's very like deep rooted. It's almost like a deep rooted belief that you just kind of, pain that lands over so when mercury which is information or discussions or other forms of communication that comes in you see it through like a very um, subjective way mm -hmm. and you kind of react very um, extremely as well to certain there's almost like a, your toes are ready to jump <laughs> yeah very yeah very well said it's like yeah. there's almost like no filter of of i will okay maybe there's no truth in maybe there's like there's no that there's almost like yeah it, it, they're manipulating me they're you know trying to curse me like immediately like like extreme total extreme uh, and, and one hopefully thing that, that libra maybe will kind of ground it a little bit you know uh, bring that doubting that doubting or thinking of two sides to it and then hopefully. it's kind of but on the on the well depending how you see it it also can be the best time ever with this prolonged square between mercury and pluto to eliminate anything that that stands in your way, that kind of takes away your personal power mm. or um, kind of stops you from the way that you want to exert your power in a certain way. 
because of that coercion and manipulation, things will become so obvious to you that, oh, okay, like this person is trying to like feed me certain stuff or I kind of discovered like, be it like emails or text messages, Mercury, that this person has been doing like something shady behind me, which is Pluto. And then you kind of like sit on the fence first, collect all those information and then later on confront that person. It yeah, may yeah, just come out like that. <laughs> that's better. That's a lot better. Like do, do that, you know. Yeah. Get the information, get the research, the, the proof. Like, so although there's, there's like patience and perseverance required, um, one thing to note though, don't give in to procrastination. Don't just sit on the fence and just rely on the liberal energy for mm. fear of making a wrong decision. That's like stepping mm. liberal energy as well. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> See, you're like, yeah, should I do this? Should I do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so anything that's really like deep rooted issues, especially, uh, I mean, this can be psychic coming from Pluto in Capricorn, right? Internal structures and outward relational ones. Um, you can fix all the all those things, but you just need to sit back and just cut. Maybe when Mercury um, is in its last direct square with Pluto, that's when you can take action. But I wouldn't say that September is a good time when uh, when Mercury squares uh, Pluto for the first two times. So maybe, maybe you just need to sit on it and just kind of contemplate with, um, certain stuff first. And be patient, wait it out, wait for it to play out until a certain extent. And then when the final square actually takes place, that's when you, um, uh, you can make the, the, the more informed decision. Yeah. Nice. I wouldn't say the first square or the second square are like very, very good times for that. Maybe that's when the issues start showing up. Mm. And then you need to kind of, you know, um, 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 probably probably uh, go to your friends and collect certain information or through the party sources or even hire a private investigator. That's very mercury mm. to 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 suss out all the suspicious things that has been festering in your mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's very much yeah. of a detective combination, I would say. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Or, on another hand, you may actually, um, you may actually realize that there's a lot of distorted interpretations on, uh, on what's being said or communicated to you as well. It can be a time to clear up all those stuff, misunderstandings. This, um, this, is, the, this is the place where I'm a little bit afraid of, you know, because Mercury is the media, you know, as well. So, right. you know, they can turn the wheels right now, I think, unfortunately, for, you know, however long this can uh, I think a it's month and for, a half. I, or a month, uh, so. I think the astral square is towards the third week of September. Uh-huh. And then, and then retro. Uh, the very last square, when uh, Mercury finally uh, squares Pluto, will be around just after Halloween. <laughs> okay, so, so a Halloween. good like five weeks mm-hmm. of back and forth so, of of uh, of Mercury and Libra. So, guys, you can see that. For that long, you know, <clears throat> obviously it won't be all the time, but like the, even right. the media can write, really like turn the wheels of, of manipulation and control, unfortunately. I'll, I'll, I'll just say it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to tiptoe it. And it, it will... Ian is telling you things without telling you directly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, doing <my laughs> to, I'm doing my best to kind of like... But it's, 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 it's like, things. <laughs> but but it's 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 a weird it's a weird thing because it, a lot of the information right now that is going to come out of that media, it, it, I would be really hesitant in a way doing my research, whatever it is coming because it it is it's geared towards um, getting those extreme emotional reactions and mental reactions because Mercury again like to get those out of the people as well 
So be, you know, as grounded as possible, do as much research as poss possible. If you see any vaccine, whatever news there is, you know, do more research on it. This is what I'm trying to say to you. I think also any data or information that's presented to you that looks nice, just take it with a pinch of salt. Because there's deeper agendas, like trying to sell you some agenda, yeah. you know, that's like a coercion or manipulation to, to, to kind of um, let you buy into a system in which you may later regret. I think that's as far as I would take it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think the best use of this energy is to listen. And, um, and with that, I think instinctive understanding will be high. We all need a bit of listening of the other party to kind of like balance our perspectives out. With Pluto squaring, I know it's hard. Everyone is like, I'm right, you're wrong. I gotta shame you. I gotta shame you. You know what I mean? Like, 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 That's, um... like the divisive nature is really, really high at this time. And uh, it's probably fueled by paranoia or anger of the and other. Fear. And, fear. and fear also of the other party that doesn't necessarily agree with you. And the list, we kind of, kind of um, uh, sacrifice that listening capability. One of the big things I do see here, guys, as well with Donnie, what Donnie said right now, and, and to add to it a little bit, is like the ones who are getting vaccinated, who are already vaccinated, will start to kind of shame the other party because now the numbers are going up again, especially in, in you know, countries that are getting colder. Right. And, and numbers are going to get up and it's almost like the blame and shame game of you didn't get vaccinated. This is when we are going to get locked down. Da, da, da. This is going to extremely get like the wheels are going to be turning. It's with very divisive. And I think with this square, this prolonged square is going to because after this, this Mercury square Pluto energy um, for the extended period of time, like we mentioned from third week of uh, September to just uh, after Halloween, which is beginning of November, we are actually heading into um, eclipse season. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, what would be the best advice I would give? Really try to listen and open up your ears to kind of have an alternative perspective to balance things out, Libra. That Libra can be coming in handy around this time. And really think before you say anything. But of course, with that, that Pluto square, I, I know it's hard to kind of not kind of lash out. But then like, um, just try to be nice and moderate with each other when you can. Because otherwise that divisiveness can be really um, detrimental as, as this leads into the eclipse season and things will kind of spin out of control with eclipses. You know, eclipses are portal energies. But um, there's an upside actually when I think about this square because conversations on the other hand with this square can be very deep, very powerful, potentially supportive as well and healing around this time. But of course, um, it depends who you talk to. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I would say I, I totally agree. There is a potential for deep healing, for deep conversation here. But like, again, you really need to go deeper with it and you need to take the time and you need to take the presence and you need to yeah. be, you know, intellect, even intellectually understand that th what is going on, what is happening, you know, and what is happening within myself. Because again, you know, example, whatever, whoever, or sorry, whatever camp you're in, you know, with the vaccines, you know, be it in the pro or negative, like the, the tendency go, to go e into either of those extremes and start lashing out at the other mm. is going to be there. So it's, it's, a, it's a requirement of almost to go into that peaceful, presentful side of your, your body inside what's, what's kind of going to be like, um, how do I put this now? The, the, um, the thoughts that are going to come up with this square it, they are going to be intense but if you start to bring yourself back to it it's it's easier to go into those deeper places of transformation to transform those fears to understand and then go into those deeper discussions with uh, with the other party you know yeah hopefully that and happens. perhaps also by doing that you will somehow like eliminate something that you previously are so adamant about mm. 
because Pluto is really that really deep, deep things that you don't want to let go. And it can be some belief systems that comes across with it as well. Yeah, that comes with it. So um, I would say just kind of look out uh, from the third week of September all the way till um, the whole Mercury retrograde finishes with that final square to Pluto. And there will be around like second or third of November, depending where you are. So for the whole of October, it can be like a, like a media circus. <laughs> yep. And you just have to take it with a pinch of salt and just like kind of don't kind of jump on it and uh, voice very like um, very subjective, emotionally biased um, viewpoints and opinions because those were actually kind of feeds into itself into this whole vortex of dark energy in which you're entering. And uh, do you want to share your screen and see what mm -hmm. um, electionals we have built um, built on? Yeah, let's let's things. take a look at a look, look let's take a look at a couple of charts. So, guys, I'm going to preface this by, you know, I'm usually when I present charts right now within this kind of context, what we're doing with Tani, I'm I'm talking about usually the day. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about this specific moment. I'm usually talking about this, you know, the day. Um, you know, in this case, the second second of the September, and so. Please don't look at the houses when we're, you know, looking at um, the charts I picked out, but more let's focus on, the, let's say, the general themes or aspects and, and uh, dignities and placements of planets and, and uh, things here. So <clears throat> always I, for me, you know, uh, some of you might know already, the moon for me is, is the most important when we're doing almost anything electional especially i gotta preface this is when we're doing something with the public so this is in this case we have the moon in nice um place we have it in in the domicile position of cancer it's still a cardinal sign it's a waning moon so maybe not starting anything new isn't isn't the best here but <clears throat> we, we're going to see here that venus still we luckily we st we l talked a lot about venus being in scorpio in this case early september we still have venus in libra so that's yeah. that's, that's still good for relationship <laughs> relationship matters you know so <clears throat> and uh, right now you can also see it's 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 doing an applying trying to uh, jupiter here and uh, you know, waning, waning trine already from Saturn, and Mercury right now or already entered Libra and is doing uh, an applying trine to Saturn, and and a, uh, let's say a wider applying trine to Jupiter. So this is, in my mind, when we're looking at this combo, I really like it for communication in general with relationships with 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 family members the only thing i don't like about this is the the thing we kind of <laughs> we didn't mention it <laughs> but pluto <Kinda>. is <laughs> is squaring uh, or sorry you know whatever way you want to look at it venus is squaring pluto so we Going don't really like apply. that but apply and it is applying so yeah. it's it's more stronger so <clears throat> in general it is a good time i think for communication inside relationships, Jupiter helps, you know, Saturn helps, you know, because Mercury is, is getting and applying a trine from Saturn, or it's, it's, it's like a grounded place for communication, uh, exchanging information, because both signs, uh, Libra and uh, Aquarius, are, are a lot to do with exchanging information. So it's a good time to do that with family members. Now, be a little bit careful with this, uh, Pluto Venus square because especially if you if you're doing it more in romantic relationships some sort of jealousy some sort of you know power dynamics can come up there as well but generally I like this time uh, with with the cancer moon uh, oh it's time to yeah. trash out certain deep-seated issues with family members I think that Pluto Venus would would love that actually yeah <clears throat> And so let's look at the next date that I have, which is the 17th of September. Mm -hmm. And this one, um, I've basically put um, Mars Angular on the 10th house cusp as the main uh, kind of driver for this, uh, for this chart. So Mars conjunct MC. 
and uh, it's the day of Venus and the hour of the sun. So depending where you are, you just adjust the, the Mars to conjunct the MC. And that will be the chart roughly that you'll be working with on the 17th of September or depending where you are, uh, plus minus one day. And when I look at that Mars conjunct MC energy is uh, wanting to be in charge, uh, but yet uh, Mars is in detriment <laughs> in Libra. <clears throat> so, um, but this somehow can be employed if you are going to start an uh, uh, entrepreneurial business or basically starting your own business and um, being your own boss of a business that's Venusian root as well. And since that Mars is in mutual reception to Venus, Venus has already entered Scorpio and these two planets are linked. Uh, this combination basically, if you have a business surrounding like uh, transforming other people's self-worth and esteem, probably through like something uh, aesthetic, aesthetically driven or clothing driven or uh, art driven, uh, mm. this can be pretty uh, helpful. As in like, for example, if someone wants to start a business uh, surrounding art therapy, perfect regarding this. Uh, because Venus is actually applying to uh, trying that Neptune before it actually squares that Jupiter, which may not be a bad thing. Um, it just tells me that um, this business will be surrounding, like maybe you as a boss, healing someone via art therapy. This can be one of those uh, manifestations or something that deals with like personal shopping. <laughs> you shop for that person, have a wardrobe, uh, to kind of transform the way they feel about their body and their self-worth and value. This can be pretty good for that as well. Um, amongst other things, or you can be some form of an independent contractor. If you want to go into freelance, this can be pretty good for that as well, to do some graphic work or some artwork, like maybe on fiverr.com or like, you know, like other, other gig economy websites. <laughs> maybe you can contemplate using this chart to publish your profile on those platforms, it may actually help. Or, uh, just something that's uh, Venus related. Mm -hmm. um, what else? It does I... seem like a very money goals, social goals, economic goals type of business. Chart, yeah, actually. because it's like, like with that Mars angular on a 10 house, right? In Libra, um, the desire to be recognized is very strong. Mm. And Mars very high up in the sky can also mean that you already have a very established sense of direction as well. So in terms of work, it can be really great. And then since like Mars is like in the 10th uh, and then mutual reception with Venus in the 11th, there are some money to be made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and ruler that. of the first in the, in the second as well. Yes. So this is a very... Um, and this is probably something that you have been thinking about it for a while because Moon and uh, Saturn are together. So initially they may be like, oh, let's, let's just kind of um, hold it to later <laughs> and do it later. But then Moon has already separated from um, Saturn. So um, there's this thing in election or that's called um, transfer of light. So, your trans so the Moon actually imprint um, Saturn's energy and bring it forward to Jupiter, which can which can kind of magnify that that uh, potential for success. It's almost like you've worked hard for it, and then you can you kind of enjoy the abundance later. So from something like restrictive and oppressive, or, or limited, as per uh, Saturn's like keywords it switches the energy into Jupiterian keywords, which are like abundance and, you know, all those, all those, all those things. Um, I even wrote down something like, this chart is probably good to start a business that's um, humanitarian based or have some sort of social impact as well. Uh, it's very good for online businesses to add on to uh, what I mentioned earlier. 
Um, but on a more personal relational level, because of their Mars and Venus um, um, that's highlighted, and I put that Mars, um, you know, angular on an angle, you can probably use this chart to kind of um, confide uh, intimately to a close friend um, about existing relationship issues that's left unaddressed um, in order to get some form of uh, sobering information um, to kind of wake yourself up on, uh, on certain potential delusions and illusions you have around uh, existing, uh, existing relationships. And last but not least, um, since Venus is in the 11th house, um, joining like a spiritual group, esoteric, metaphysical, or astrological group, um, in order to build um, profound relationships that's also practical in nature as well. That's what I have for this chart. I mean, although Venus is squaring that Moon and Saturn, uh, you can get really useful yet practical, uh, practical um, insights into your emotional world as well. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're you maybe just a tiny bit of not good enough can just percolate there if, if you join yeah. some groups or something. <laughs> with that yeah, 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 yeah. Because the next aspect Moon will make is that uh, is that um, conjunction with Jupiter that that higher knowing that higher knowledge of things may actually come forth. So some good stuff there. And uh, uh, the sun is in a ninth house and it's a planetary joy over here as well. Oh, so nice. it's almost like that. Um, although it's in Virgo, but then like it's almost like you need to look into the finer details of life in order to get that higher knowing of things. Yeah, and it works pretty well with that uh, Venus, in the, uh, Venus in the 11, um, be it Placidus or whole sign house can be pretty useful for that. Anything to add regarding to this month's like energies? I guess only the Mercury retrograde, you guys. We're about to enter, you know, soon a couple of weeks into the shadow. You know, I've always observed that the shadow period, the, the pre-shadow period to the retrograde is, is most often the more intense one, more things come your way that you need to take action on during the retrograde you need to work you need to research you need to create you need to make and uh be prepared for that coming in during the shadow so this this is like i would say more prominent from let's say the 10th approximately the 10th of of september maybe 8th you know around that time mm -hmm. I, I usually use the three week period for shadow depends on your taste and, you know, with, with the retrograde, whatever comes your way, new things during the retrograde, I would still be holding off with them and doing research with them. This is important to do. But if it's something you've been doing for a while and something that's been building, you want, wanted to purchase something that's been, you know, you've been, these opportunities will be brought to you during the retrograde. But if it's totally something new, I would do research during the retrograde. And then after the ret retrograde is done, then start um, uh, purchasing new things and, and um, taking action with entirely new things. This is, this is important for you. Yeah. yeah. So till next month then for October's energies. See you, see you <laughs> in, in October, guys. Yeah. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Very to important. Channels. And yeah, have a careful September. <laughs> I, but I think a lot of uh, subliminal, subliminal and hidden truths will be revealed as well with this, uh, with this energy for September. So guys, take care. Guys, take care. Bye. All right. So goodbye. <laughs>